Video is not working. <laughs> Just trying to help. She says she can hear me. Excellent. Set everybody. Okay, with that, I'd like to open this special uh, meeting of the ZBA. Clerk, please call the roll. Matt Kaiser. Present. Richard Brooks. Present. Brad Fredette. Present. Ken Hilton. Present. Okay, we're going to continue with uh, four members on the board. Uh, the item on the agenda is a motion for rehearing. Shane Collin of Butter is seeking a rehearing of the application granted on August 7th, 2024, to 396 High Street, LLC. For a special exception from Table 4A1 to convert the existing office building to a multi-unit dwelling for property located at 396 High Street in the Residential Commercial RC District Assessor's Map 36, Lot 45, ZBA Case 10, TAC 2024. This is not a public hearing, uh, so I'll open it up to the board. Ms. Crosley. Okay, so as mentioned, um, an abutter is requesting this rehearing of the application that was submitted by... 396 High Street for the special exception from Table 4A1 to convert the existing office building to a multi-unit dwelling for a property located at 396 High Street. The board approved the special exception request at the August 7th, 2024 meeting with the following condition for the planning board to conduct a special review of traffic flow in and out of the site. So the rehearing process is a two-part process. The board reviews this request that was submitted to um, determine if the board made any errors um, that should be corrected at the from the first hearing um, and, or if there's new evidence. So errors could be procedural errors or just review errors. If you have additional information you feel that should be added to the case, then that is more likely a reason to grant a hearing for either way of your vote, uh, opinion about the case. If the board votes to grant a rehearing, we would schedule a new public hearing for the application, most likely at our October, sorry, almost said August again, um, at the October meeting, um, and it would be represented to you for voting again. And the case would basically, be, would basically go back to zero and start over again. Every, the, the applicant would represent the case. Yep. And, and You'd re-review the criteria for special exception and then vote on it. Okay. All right, discussion. Mr. Perdue. I mean, I think Mr. Conlon makes, essentially Mr. Conlon's argument for a rehearing is that the board's error rests in the fact that um, he focuses on uh, criteria four, okay, and his argument is essentially that um, the applicant made no specific presentation to the board on how um, the, with, with no evidentiary presentation to the board on how the um, noise, glare, light, et cetera, buffering was gonna be carried out. Um, I would agree with his argument somehow. Um, I think we focused on traffic impacts, but I know part of the applicant's original argument rested on you know, the glare and, and buffer concept for the neighboring single family homes. Okay. Brooks. So obviously we discussed traffic, we discussed buffer a little less, but I know we did focus on traffic with the majority of our discussion during this. And, you know, when you, when you start talking about the buffering and light, I mean, there's already zoning ordinance that would limit light to be downcast and not to encroach onto other property. So, you know, it's almost like we already have ordinances that would oversee that. So I don't feel that we need to delve into that. It's already covered with an ordinance. Um, so I, I don't feel that we needed to really discuss that much more than we did. Uh, as far as the traffic goes, I certainly understand there's concern with that. And I think by us asking the planning board to look at that, we did our due diligence. If he's asking for actual plans on this, then 
makes me wonder, shouldn't he go to the planning board first? Because they're going to hash out all the plans. That's typically their role in this. So it makes me wonder, should these special exceptions go before the planning board and have everything hashed out? And then once there's a final plan, then we say yes or no to a special exception? Or is that backwards? I, I guess it makes me wonder if that wouldn't be a possibility or because I, I don't feel that we have the role of saying this is how the traffic flow, flow should be. There should be an island here, a sign there. That, that seems like a planning board issue, not our issue. Um, by us saying the planning board should look at it, I think we're doing our due diligence to make sure that that gets addressed. That's kind of my con my take on this. Okay. Sure. I thought we did talk about the lighting there and not in depth, but I mean, I think that there was some talk about the lighting, if I remember right. I would agree. There was. And we, we thought that that the planning and that there were ordinances that it was already that that would be dealt with and that wasn't part of the we we weren't concerned about that I'll say it that way okay Mr. Brooks another thing as I was reading through this the other night um, I noticed most of the case law that he quoted are from the 70s and I not sure that the innovative land use controls that is what a planning board considers were in place at the time so maybe this rested more on the zoning board then so i kind of almost wonder if some of these case laws aren't outdated i mean to go back and read every case and everything it take quite a substantial amount of time um to see the you know more finite details on that but um just another thing i I thought of is you know the uh, site plans and innovative land use controls I think are something that's a bit newer than the 70s okay. well let me make a few I'll make a few comments so to re to recircle around um, they're asking for the appeal uh, appeal can be granted on on several issues one if the zoning board feels they made a mistake specifically um, that we in, incorrectly, and that mistake, mistake can be several things, but primarily that if we uh, incorrectly uh, ruled on one of the justifications or criteria to grant the special exception. Um, I think the, 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 per, the appealing party had the same issue that we did, is it's, it's hard to prove the negative in a lot of things and say, Oh, because some of the criteria is very vague on it meets all criteria, meets all zoning ordinances. How do you go about approve, you know, as a board saying it meet, or as an applicant saying it's going to meet all zoning requirements? You, you believe it is, but it's kind of hard to prove that. Um, it's kind of hard to, to prove that it's not going to affect the lighting. You know, the lighting's not going to affect it without, you know, without specific things. Um, so in, in a general review of the special exception criteria, I don't feel the board erred in its decision. In review of the, uh, the appealing party's letter, I also did not find any new information um, to prove or to come to decide that th this board did not, uh, that the application did not meet this, the exception criteria. With that said, the big but I'm going to give you is in review of our meeting minutes, I did not find uh, evidence that we satisfactorily went through the exception, the special exception criteria and documented that we analyzed each criteria and determined that the application either met or did not meet the application. And for that reason, I think we should grant this uh, this rehearing if to, no, to do nothing else. If there's new information that comes out, so be it. And we can make it in the decision is, is different, so be it. But, it. but based on the review of our minutes, I didn't find that we adequately documented how this met the special exception criteria so i think we should grant the hearing rehearing so that we can do that mr Ferdinand. 
I think that's a reasonable approach. I know we've had some other cases come before us before that we were reminded from the ordinance perspective that we needed some pretty solid connections and seems reasonable for an applicant that's a citizen to grant them this latitude. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. So basically your argument on this is that the seven requirement criteria re related to special exceptions, we didn't go and bullet point each one at the end of the meeting and say, yes, we feel this is satisfied, no, this isn't, yes, this is, and so on down the list. Well, not necessarily that, but if you look at our minutes, the, the, the minutes of the meeting, you can't, you can't say that we, it doesn't appear that we, we don't have to bullet point them, but that is a good point, the way to do it, but you can't go through those minutes and say, okay, we analyzed this criteria and, it, and we determined it met it, we analyzed this criteria. You can't, just can't go through that. You can't find it in our minutes. Because I, I'm just, I, I actually watched the meeting again today just to refresh my memory on this and yep. know what was discussed for sure. And, you know, I, obviously the applicant had addressed all seven criteria in his discussion. Correct. We discussed, I, from what I recalled, we did discuss every aspect of all seven, but I guess, did we go through and bullet point at the end and say yes, no? I, I guess maybe we didn't do that specifically, but I mean, I, I really feel like we covered all the topics. Some of them might have just touched on for a moment because some I think are obvious. Just common sense tells you that this isn't a concern. Others, like the traffic, was a bigger concern, so that got more discussion. I understand. I understand. I, I understand what you're saying, and, and it's difficult sometimes to go do that. Um, I. This brought back memories of a case in which a previous abutter, or not abutter, a, a non-applicant, someone, non, someone on the applicant um, appealed a case, and it was remanded, remanded back to this board because this board didn't provide that documentation. We never reheard it because the applicant decided to turn, decide not to, and they sold the property instead. Um, but that has happened in the past. Go ahead, Mr. Hilton. Um, has the other, has the party purchased the property already? All right. The reason I'm thinking is if, if we're going to go back through all this again and do this, do this one more time, and the other person's, you know, they're, it's costing them money to be, and we've already made our decision. We made a decision already, you know, that's, you know, I, unless there's, it, it doesn't feel like to me that there's any new information in here that would would warrant that. But because I didn't see any new information here. Mm -hmm. But I understand what you're talking about as far as the bullet points and making sure we dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's before we. So, but just. If I if I had gone before the zoning board and I got something, and then have to go back and do it again, we clearly have done a disservice to the app the applicant. Correct. Yeah, that would be a concern. Mr. Fredericks, I think we always have to weigh the harm of the appellant against the harm of the appellee, and in this case. Um, you know, I would imagine, I don't know, but I would I would be hopeful that somebody who owns multiple rental properties would let the process play out. But ultimately, you know, I don't think the process that was followed to get the appellant to where he is today should necessarily be weighed directly against harm to the applicant. Unfortunately, is the the other appeal for the abutter is to go to the appeals court? Is that correct? So if if we fail if we fail to grant a rehearing, their next step would be go, yes to take go to court. Correct, okay. take it up to superior superior court. Correct. 
Yes, I believe they can choose between Superior Court or the Housing Board of Appeals. Okay, yeah, they have two different yeah. avenues. They can go one or the other. Okay. Just for that. And again, if, if they choose to go that route, that's obviously their choice and then an expense to them, but at least our proceedings with this extra step that may take two to four weeks or six weeks, depending on the process, I think, um, you know, at least we show the court we've done our due diligence as a board and I, I'm going to vote with, or I am going to side with Chairman Kaiser's position on this. You know, I feel like you're all looking at me, but I, I guess I'm. See if you have a further <laughs> comment. That's all. I, I guess I'm torn on this. I, that's why I'm giving you the time. You know, I, I, I don't think we aired. I, I think we covered all the topics. I also don't think there's new information here. So that's basically the two criteria that usually trigger a rehearing. But then, when you talk about past case law here here we go back to case law if we've had one overturned by a court before because we didn't bullet point them out at the end you know it makes me think maybe we should do it but um, at the same time I don't feel that it's you know I guess if you read the minutes that's a summary if you watch the meeting I'm sure you would hear all the discussion that includes more than what's in the minutes you know unfortunately minutes are rather an antiquated thing from before we had video recordings and now they're the official meeting minutes but we're really a recording is better for that sort of use now and I guess this is a problem where technology hasn't caught up with stuff yeah, the, the, unfortunately, the, the minutes are the, the official document, legal purposes, and and the uh, the the part the appealing party, you know, he they brings brings up an an interesting point, and I've read that this before, as known in the New Hampshire Office of Planning and Zoning Board of Adjustment Handbook, in the case of Alcorn versus Rochester, New Hampshire Supreme Court remanded decision of the Board of Adjustment, stating that a fair of this board disclosed the real basis of its decision, prevented the planters from making the requisite specifications. So, but. And our minutes are, are what document it. And if you go through our minutes, you don't come up with, now either we have to update our minutes, if we, if we want to re through, go through the minute, the, the, the video of the minutes and update our minutes if they're not thorough, but I, I, they probably are, um, we would, our best bet is to grant the rehearing for documentation. I don't, Okay. Hearing decisions are not easy. I'm going to throw another monkey wrench into this then. Feel free. I didn't see the minutes until I walked in and sat down at the desk tonight. I didn't actually have time to read through them, and I didn't consider how much the minutes play into this until you brought up your point. Normally, we approve these at the next meeting. These are not on the agenda to even approve this one. So they could be adjusted at the next meeting. Just throwing out the process here it, this is why minutes are kind of antiquated if you ask me at this point i well based on that then let's let's why don't we take a 15 minute recess you can read those minutes to make sure that you're uh, you're comfortable with the decision how's that sound i mean i think that's what we need to do then Mr. Burdett? yeah i mean i don't think i don't know the case law without looking it up but i don't think i understand what mr brooks is trying to achieve but I don't think we can can we miss Crosley re revise the minutes to that to the video. level to the video because wouldn't isn't the normal revision process anyway go ahead I mean I just I understand yes, what we, Mr. We, Brooks we could. Is... the minutes have not been approved so the minutes clearly can be updated prior to that if, if they are not if there's enough information out there, or they are incorrect. Can but I, we would rehear this at the next meeting. You did approve these at your 
meeting last week. Oh, we did. That's right. These are the previous meeting minutes. Yeah, correct. they're not. We did approve them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My apologies. I mixed that up then. So they right. have been approved then. My. Yeah. They were in front of me. I was thinking they were fresh. I no. <laughs> yeah, was, that's, you're, you're correct. It was the other meeting. It was the September's meeting minutes that we haven't approved yet. You, are, you haven't had a chance to read. These are ones we approved at the last meeting. Correct. Correct. Sorry. You're right. I didn't catch that. It's what you're saying. What do you think, Mr. Hilton? I would say then if that's the case, then we should go back and rehear this again. I hate to do it because once you, once you, but I understand where he's coming from, and uh, yeah, it all depends on how hard someone's willing to push on something, and that's, and I, I would, I would venture to say I think that it would be better for them to push and go the appeals court way, but I think that this would be uh, us doing our due diligence and following through with it in, uh, yeah, and going above and beyond to try and do it the right way. Let's say it that way. Okay. And while we don't know the specific circumstances of where the purchase process stands, I mean, I think I always feel that I have a certain responsibility to the residents of this city whom I represent on this board, and I think we in this case where we have this much question owe it to a resident of the city to allow him the opportunity to be heard and to make sure that the process is followed as the court has dictated okay further discussion before we ask for a motion all right uh, chair will entertain a motion mr fredette after review of the request and all the information presented to the board, I feel that the board did err in the decision-making process because substantial evidence was not provided for criteria, and I move that the request of Shane Conlon for a rehearing of the special exception application to convert existing office building to a multifamily unit dwelling for property located at 396 High Street, CBA case number 10-2024, be granted. Do have a motion? Do we have a second? Okay, we did, the, the motion wasn't seconded, so therefore the motion dies. Go ahead, Mr. Hilton. Oh, I don't think that we erred. I think that we did not dot all our I's and cross all our T's as far as the minutes go. So, so document it. We did not yeah. adequately document our decision. Right. Decision but I, process. So. Right. But I wouldn't say that we erred. <laughs> I'll just say you it that. You say way. that we erred and adequately document our Isn't decision that process. What I said. Okay. <laughs> but I didn't think that that was what the motion was. I, it was, it but that's was. okay. It it dead. Sound, yeah, I would agree. It didn't sound like that either. Yeah. So we aired, we basically, you, you would agree if it was something similar to uh, we aired in our this documentation of our decision process. Yeah. Mr. Burdett, we'd like to try again? Or would you like to try, Mr. Hilton? <laughs> Mr. Hilton, <laughs> go ahead. I don't want to say that. Uh, I think we, I think we can grant the reason the rehearing of this case, this process, and hear it again. Okay. So you have to go through the approval motion, which Ms. Crosby will help you with. Yeah. But read through it and how you want to, you can mark up the paper and how you want to word it to make sure you get the right the wording you okay. want. I'll, I'll work at it here. After review of the request and all the information presented to the board, I feel that the board aired in the documentation process and but i didn't didn't see any new evidence yeah and i move that the request of shane conlon for a rehearing of the special exception application to convert the existing office building to a multi 
unit dwelling for property located at 396 High Street, ZBA number 10, 2024 be granted. We have a motion to move a second. Second by Mr. Fredette. So if I get this right, we have a motion to, re to grant the rehearing based on the fact that the board erred in our documenting of our decision process. That's correct. I would agree that's the, the, the flavor of what, what yep. we're doing. Yeah, correct. Okay. Discussion on the motion. Besides what I just discussed. <laughs> All right. All those in favor of the motion, approval of the motion will be to grant the rehearing. Raise your right hand. Those opposed. The motion passes three to one. The rehearing is granted. Any other business, Ms. Crosley? No. Any other comments from the board? Chair will understand a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn and second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Four to zero. We are adjourned. Thank you. For